In day three, we're going to use inverses to help us solve some matrices. So when solving a system of, of equations, inverse matrices can be used. The inverse of the coefficient matrix can be used to write the solution matrix as the product of two matrices. So what that looks like is we would have the solution matrix here, and that's going to equal the inverse of the coefficient matrix and that little negative one up here on the top represents the inverse times the constant matrix So if we take a look at example one, we're going to use that idea here. So example one says, use the inverse of the coefficient matrix to write the solution matrix as a product of two matrices, and then find the solution to the system. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find that inverse. So we can say A inverse equals and we're taking that coefficient matrix, so negative one-fifth, negative four-fifths, negative three-fifths, negative three-fifths, negative seven-fifths, negative four-fifths, and then down here, negative four-fifths, negative six over five, and negative 7 over 5. So we're taking the inverse of this matrix and that's going to equal 5, negative 2, negative 1, oops, negative 1, negative 1 and 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, And that will be given to you. So this is the inverse of the coefficient matrix. Then what we're going to do in step number one is we're going to write it as a product. So we're going to write it as we are trying to find the solution matrix, which is x, y, and z. And that's going to be equal to, we're going to take our inverse of our coefficient matrix, which we found above, is 5, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, and negative 1. And we are going to multiply this. by the constant matrix. And our constant matrix, our constants are coming from right here, which is negative 2, 8, and 10. So that's the first thing that you're going to write down. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and find those solutions. So in part 2, we have to find the solution. So we're looking for x, y, and z. In, in order to do that, we are multiplying. So we're doing this multiplication here. So if we multiply, we can look and see we have a 3 by 3 multiplied by a 3 by 1. So notice these two numbers match up, and we should get a 3 by 1 in the end. So when I multiply, let me move this up just a little bit more. we're going to get this row times this column. So we have 5 times negative 2 plus negative 2 times 8 plus negative 1 times 10. 
Then we're going to take this row by this column, and we get negative 1 times negative 2 plus negative 1 times 8 plus 1 times 10. And then we'll do our bottom row times this column here, and we get 5, oh, I'm sorry, negative 2 times negative 2 plus 2 times 8 plus negative 1 times 10. And if we start simplifying that, we get 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 2 times 8 would give us a minus 16. Negative 1 times 10 gives us minus 10. And then negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 1 times 8 would give us a minus 8. 1 times 10 would give us a positive 10. In the bottom, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 2 times 8 would give us a positive 16. And negative 1 times 10 would give us a minus 10. And that would give us our final answer here. On the top, we would have negative 36. In the middle row, that would equal 4. And the bottom row would be 10. So we can say in here that x equals negative 36, y is equal to 4, and z is equal to 10. Next I would like you to go into the back side and look at the try this. I will tell you though before you get started for the try this that the inverse function, so a inverse, is going to be equal to 3, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 2, negative 1, and 2. So I want you to do the first two steps that we did above. Write it as a product. So 1, you're going to write it as a product. And then the second thing you want to do is find the solution. After you've done that, you can check your answer. So go ahead and pause it now. If you did it correctly, in step one, you should have written it out as the following. x, y, z equals 3, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 2, negative 1, 2, times 9, 9, and negative 10. And in step two, if you found the solution correctly by multiplying, you should have gotten x to be negative 5, y to be negative 3, and z to be negative 11. If you have any questions, please let me know.